So we are fastly approaching the three year mark since ChatGPT was released. I know AI existed before this, but I feel like this is when it kind of hit the mainstream along with everyone's fear that game development would die a painful death because of it. Since then, it actually has exploded and people are using it like crazy. And there are thousands more games being released to Steam than there ever has. And because of that, I kind of wanted to do a mini deep dive into, you know, what people were afraid of and how it actually has affected game development and developers and you know all that stuff and then I wanted to talk about sort of what the future could look like and if we should be afraid of the next three years so with all that being said let's get into it before we get into it though I wanted to just say hey I have a game coming out in like two months uh, it's a game called prepare the pass it is a Pokemon snap octopath traveler looking game there's a there's you know entities that you got to take pictures of and you got to try not to die because of them if that sounds like a game up your alley follow the link in the description below it would mean the world to me if you wish listed it go check it out so the fear of AI what was it well when AI obviously started evolving really quickly many people thought that it was going to replace them entirely I mentioned steam you know games just thousands more of them being released but this was the fear people thought that you know entire games would be made with AI and maybe that will happen in the future but at the three-year mark that is not the case people thought that you know entire studios were going to be replaced and that creativity itself would die because of it well that that hasn't happened so far I know we're only three years into it but games are being made with AI and that is not the case what actually has happened is that more of the repetitive tasks have been allocated to their AI assistant on ChatGPT instead of having to write all these lines of code that would be tedious now chat is doing it and you got an extra two minutes and those two minutes here and there add up real fast and that's happening all the time another thing that i find very interesting that we're going to get into a little bit later is that art specifically art and music is still very looked down upon in a kind of aggressive manner like if you see a sick finger you're like oh gross like what is that you know it's like oh my gosh you know like it is it is very noticeable and people hate it, you know, and that is just very interesting to me. We're gonna get into it more later, but people don't like AI art. And, you know, it really, ChatGPT or whatever you wanna use, you know, GitHub, you know, Copilot, whatever, it has really just been being used as a tool that enhances the workflow. And, you know, because of that, because it speeds up everything, there's a bunch of, there's a lot more shovelware, zombie games, games that just lack heart, and that's what has happened. So, very interesting stuff. In, in my opinion. So I want to take a moment to, you know, talk about how it has actually affected developers in a, a little bit more real way. Things like ChatGPT or GitHub Copilot just solve problems faster, help you debug and write code and learn how to, you know, problem solve faster. The problem solving aspect of game development has kind of completely changed. You know, instead of looking to YouTube for tutorials, you can go to ChatGPT. And obviously tutorials are still huge on YouTube, but it just is different than it used to be you know I remember like seven years ago surfing the web for literally days to try to figure out the answer to a bug I was having or an issue just in general that I was having and you know I'd have to take my own question and pair it up against other people's questions and answers and half the time they wouldn't fit and it was just a mess and it was terrible and AI has kind of resolved that in some ways with just being able to ask it questions and then you know from like a, a, a writing and narrative perspective you can just ask it to make you a dialogue scene and obviously you know it has to go through the human filter which is something I'm going to continue talking about a little bit the human filter AI still goes through the human filter and you know we still choose what we are going to use when it comes from you know an, an artistic perspective having that AI assistant to help you you know come up with you know unique names or languages or races in your game obviously that that saves you so much time and that's a very interesting perspective to kind of view AI through and so this is where it comes to you know the artistic or you know musician aspect to AI you know because it is still if you see AI art it's like repulsive this is going to continue to be a gray area as we go further into the AI era. I'm gonna have it on the screen, I don't have it on my screen here, but I wanted to share a website or app, if you could call it, uh, called Pixel Labs. And Pixel Labs is uh, a pixel art AI generating machine. You know, you it is like, just like ChatGPT, you type in a prompt and it generates an image for you in pixel art. And the real interesting aspect of all this is I am someone who is 
not good at art. So when I see something like this, it is very attractive to me. I wanna use it because I'm so terrible at art. And the fact that I can type in a prompt that is me, that is myself, and I'm pouring myself into the prompt and it is then creating something from my prompt, it is, again, like I mentioned, it's going through that human filter. I then get to decide whether I choose that thing that has spit out at me. And I just think that is very interesting. Pixel Labs is awesome. I have used it, you know, for concepting and stuff like that, and it's very cool. I got a chance to speak with some of the, with some of the developers, you know. You can use skeletons to animate stuff, and it's just a robust tool. It's awesome. I'll have a link in the description below. But I'm just curious what you guys think about this. This is also a video that I wanted to get your guys' input on. What do you guys think of AI art, and are you repulsed as it as you were, you know, a few years ago? Obviously, there's the whole aspect of, you know, using other people's art without them getting the credit, and obviously that's not okay, especially from the art or from the music perspective what are you guys thoughts on this if used in in a really creative way would you be willing to use ai art a perfect example of this is a creator on instagram named jurassic smoothie he does horror art horror ai art for like movie trailers and it looks amazing it looks so cool it's made with ai art and the comments are like oh this is trash because it's ai and i'm like Dude, like this looks really cool and horrifying. I've never like really saw anything like this. And I don't know, I I really like Jurassic Smoothie, but with it being AIR, it's kind of like this gray area. And I'm just curious what you guys think of this. I'm curious what you guys think of this. Go check out Jurassic Smoothie, go check out Pixel Labs. They're both fantastic. Tell me what you think about it. It's a gray area and it's gonna continue to be a gray area for a while. So how has AI been helpful for, for indie devs and you know, have the fears come true? Well, solo devs can do so much more now with fewer resources. You can ask focused questions and get answers to them. Obviously you have to check them and you have to know what you're asking and you have to kind of understand what it's telling you. Solo devs just have so many more tools at their disposal and um, that's crazy helpful and, and it just completely lowers the bar for beginners. And that's really cool, especially for someone like me who is trying to learn programming. Again, like I mentioned, I don't have to surf the web for hours, days to try to figure out the answers to some of my questions. I can literally just ask a focused question and an answer it for me. Obviously, sometimes if it's like crazy complex, I might check it with some people. From a learning perspective, it's insanely helpful. Insanely helpful. And so have, you know, the fears come true? You know, has it hurt developers? It has actually. You know, some people have lost their jobs and that really sucks. You know, anytime you have a new technology, something new is invent invented, like cars, the people who take care of the horses, they're probably gonna lose their job. And that really sucks. That really sucks when people lose their jobs. Unfortunately, it is sort of the way the world works, kind of, you know? Again, that, that just sucks. That just sucks. That just sucks, you know? And so I think the biggest shift is that AI, you know, is, is being used as a tool instead of a replacement. And I think that, I don't think people really thought that was gonna happen. I think people thought it would be happening way faster. I mean, look at the Will Smith spaghetti, you know? It has been going really fast, but I mean, Will Smith, he's, he's eating that spaghetti. So, anyway, so what could the next three years look like? I think we can all agree, especially when looking at Will Smith eating spaghetti, it's evolving and it's evolving crazy fast. And I think, you know, as developers, it is a tool. It is a tool. If anything, we have learned that it is a tool that if used correctly, can be crazy beneficial insanely beneficial. And I think what could happen in the next three years is that individualism, you know, what makes us human will become increasingly more valuable. And I think that's a great thing. I think that's a very cool thing, actually. Uh, it makes me very excited, actually. Um, I just use actually a bunch of times. But that's very exciting. The unfortunate thing is there could be people that continue to lose jobs and there'll be new jobs. As with any new thing, you know, people are gonna learn how to use AI and then there's gonna be job openings for AI and, and using stuff like that. And that'll be really interesting. Um, and, and I think the key is with the, the years going forward is to continue to learn, continue to be educated on what AI is doing, how to use it the best way possible because you really don't wanna use it as a crutch 
you want to allow it to help you the best way it can. So that has been my deep dive into AI and how it has actually affected developers. It has sucked and it has been great in some ways. And I honestly feel like so far it's been a net positive. Obviously, you're going to have the crap. You're going to have the bad stuff like people losing their jobs and that really sucks. But as far as like a tool goes, it has been insanely helpful. So that's kind of my deep dive. Again, I have a game coming out in about two-ish months um, called Prepare the Past. There's going to be a link, the trip, a link in the description below. It is a Pokemon Snap Octopath Traveler looking game. If that's your thing. Go wishlist it. It would literally mean the world to me. Thank you guys for being here. I'm going to have, I keep saying that there's going to be a devlog. Who knows when it'll come out. I just want to make sure the game looks good enough for a devlog. And, um, but hit that like and subscribe button if you like content like this. So again, thank you guys for being here. It means the world, but I'll see you next week. See you guys.